Welcome to the Prep Pigskin Report Podcast, hosted by Papa Pig himself, Paul Rudy. Welcome, everybody, to episode number four of the PPR Podcast. I'm Paul, this is Bert, and boy, do we have a special guest. Would you like to introduce? Jim McMahon, famous for one of the most cutting-edge raps ever, the Super Bowl Shuffle. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> okay. Jim, uh, I don't know he how, needs well, no introduction. how well you uh, know uh, the Prep Pigs Report. We do a high school football show here in San Diego. And we're, we're interested in your high school football days, which, as I understand it, was split between two schools. Could you explain? Well, I grew up in San Jose, California, uh, from the time I was almost three until I was 16. So I played my first two years of high school ball in San Jose. Uh, which was nice because we got to throw the ball quite a bit. Um, and then uh, my dad's job moved him to Roy, Utah, my junior year in high school. And when I got up there, they were actually running the wishbone. Ah. I'd only seen that on television. So it was, uh, it took me a little bit to, to figure that out. But uh, yeah, it was two, two totally different uh, programs and, and uh, offenses, but uh, it's still high school football. Hey, Jim, you have a well documented uh, Mike Dicka relationship. Who was the best coach you've ever had? I mean, high school, youth, anywhere, up until pro. Yeah, who, who changed your life? Uh, my dad. My dad was my coach growing up. Uh, you know, he taught us, me and my brothers, he taught us the fundamentals of the different sports that we were playing. Uh, he always told us that if you're fundamentally sound, you can play pretty much any sport. And if you if you got any talent, you know, you can, you can take it from there. But uh, you, you've got to know the fundamentals, and he taught us that. Taught us how to win, taught us how to lose the right way. And, uh, yeah, he was uh, very influential in, in my career. Uh, Bert tells me that when you're, even as if you're, as an accomplished NFL career you had in his college career that you have, that when you think back on your football days, they often go back all the way to your high school level. It, one, is that true with you? And, and two, what's your favorite high school memory? Getting out of high school. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you know, I, you learn you learn a lot coming up. You know, you learn you learn how, like I say, you learn fundamentals. You learn how to uh, get along with different types of people, um, and you and you learn how to you learn how to play. You learn how to win, and that's that's basically what that high school was all about. And then you know that I uh, just brought that forward all the way through my career. Hey, you don't come off as a <clears throat> a good Mormon to me. Um, how do you end up at BYU? Because you would be, I remember growing up and watching you, um, you know, in high school and college and, and, and BYU, I just never was a fit for me. I couldn't put the two together. How'd that happen? Well, when I, um, you know, like I said, I started as a sophomore in California. Had I stayed there, I might have ended up somewhere else. But <clears throat> when I moved to Utah, I kind of got lost in the shuffle. I did go back to uh, some big schools in Nebraska. You know, Oklahoma State, uh, I went up to Boise. I'd never been to Idaho. Um, but my, my biggest thing back growing up was, was I wanted to play baseball. And baseball was always my first love. I still love the game. Um, so I wanted to go to a school that, that would allow me to play both sports. And the only two schools that said I could play both was BYU or Nevada, Las Vegas. And uh, Vegas was my last recruiting trip. It was a lot of fun. I came home from Vegas and Pops, I'm going to Vegas. And he said, no, you're not. He wouldn't let, he wouldn't let me go. He, he just didn't think it was a big enough school at the time, I, I guess. Um, I think he might have been worried about me going on to the next level had I gone to Vegas, but I, I wasn't worried about that. I, I knew I was good enough to play at the next level, but I wanted to have a little fun in college too, like everybody else seemed to have. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, it worked out pretty well, but uh, I ended up, you know, going to BYU, I got to play, I played baseball my first, uh, my freshman year. I played about eight games. Um, BYU said I could play uh, baseball, but they didn't say I could, I couldn't get out of spring football practice. Oh. So I would play a game of a double header and I was playing in the outfield and throwing the ball from the outfield is a hell of a lot different than throwing it from the pocket. And since uh, football was my scholarship, I ended up, you know, just sticking with football after about eight games of baseball. I can see, you see the comparison. I watched Casino the other night, you know, Mob, Las yeah, yeah, Vegas, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Provo, Utah, yeah, it's the same you thing. You would have fit in better there. Uh, Jim, what's your, do you have any recruiting stories that you can share with us? Uh, how, how often did your phone ring? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't get, you know, as many offers as I would have gotten had I stayed in California, but, uh, you know, I, I had plenty. 
like I said, Nebraska was probably the biggest school at the time that was recruiting me. Uh, being raised Catholic, I always wanted to go to Notre Dame, and Notre Dame was, uh, they didn't recruit me, so uh, passed on that. But, uh, yeah, I think it, it all worked out. Tell me, I, I know you love to do this. Can you sing the Super Bowl shuffle your part for me or no? No, I didn't want to do it the first time. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah, you, that, that was cut in later, wasn't it? Yes. In fact, uh, Walter Payton and I, we didn't go to the taping. Uh, you know, they end up taping that stupid thing uh, <laughs> the day after we lost to Miami on a Monday night down in Miami. So, you know, we got back to Chicago probably three or four in the morning. Uh, the guys had to be at the studio the next day. I think it was eight or nine in the morning. Uh, they were there for probably eight to ten hours. And Walter and I had told them we weren't, we weren't going to go because that wasn't part of the original deal. You know, the deal was we're going to make a record. And the proceeds would feed the homeless on Thanksgiving and Christmas. That was that was the the, the preface. And so, uh, you know, we, we all did our speaking parts for the record. And then about two weeks later, uh, Willie Gall came to us and said, hey, you guys, you know, we have to do a, a video now. And then we said, no, that, that wasn't part of the deal. And he says, well, you know, when you make a record now, you, ha you have to do a video too. And I said, well, that wasn't part of the deal. And Walter and I both said, look, we're not coming. And we didn't go. And so about a week after that, they came to us again and said, if we don't do our parts, we're going to get sued. So what you see in that, uh, what you see in that video is a couple of guys that had to do their parts after practice in the racquetball court at Hallis Hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, it was, uh, that's one pissed off white man you see in that video. <laughs> uh, um, but it became a signature, for, a signature moment for a signature team. Do you, when's the last time you've watched it start to finish? Oh God! Everywhere I go, that seems to pop up. You know, I was introduced this year up in Lake Tahoe with some of those lyrics, and I, that's probably why I play so damn bad this year. <laughs> Got me off on the wrong frame of mind. Uh, you know. I, People still talk about it. You know, it was it was kind of cool at the time, I guess. But uh, you know, doing it was not all that fun. Hey, did you get? I mean, you had a pretty good relationship with Walter Payton. What's it like playing with him? And we had that. The other part was you and I have the unfortunate experience, worse than the Super Bowl Shuffle, of both seeing Refrigerator Perry naked in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you come back from seeing something like that? Because I still can. And I was wondering if you could and help me out a little bit. Well, uh, playing with Walter was was a blast. He was a he was a great teammate, a great football player. Uh, you know, they're still the strongest guy I've ever met in my life. I mean, he was probably 208 pounds of, of rock. I mean, the guy yeah. just solid everywhere. Just did not want to be tackled. Uh, you know, the guy never ran out of bounds. He was always looking for somebody to hit. And uh, it was just a pleasure to play with. He wasn't one of those guys that ever said anything in the huddle, like, give me the ball, you know, do this, do that. You know, he just did his job, and uh, he did his better than anybody I've ever seen. You know, everyone knows about that Super Bowl ring, but you have two Super Bowl rings, do you not? I was lucky enough to be with the Packers back in 96. Uh, I was backing up Brett Favre. Uh, we, had a, we had a good football team there and ended up winning the Super Bowl there. Uh, how, how was that relationship? Uh, I haven't seen Brett in a while. I'll probably see him... Uh, the first part of October, we're having our 25th uh, anniversary of that of that Super Bowl team up in Green Bay this year, and hopefully he'll be up there. I know I'm going up, and uh, look forward to seeing some of the old guys and have a little fun up in Green Bay. You know, but you had that swashbuckling style before Brett. Was, anyone knew the name Brett Favre? I, did you guys get along? Yeah, I mean, he was he was fun to play with. You know, great competitor, very you know, just a tough kid. Just loved to play the game. Uh, you know, he didn't do didn't do everything correctly, but uh, you know, you know, he did enough to to get us a, a Super Bowl win. And uh, you know, like I said, he was a great competitor. You know, he would he would hit the free safety in the chest with the ball at least once a game. And, and Holmgren would look at me and go, "Why did he do that?" I said, "Hell, I don't know. I just got here. You know, you've been there with him for four years." But he, you know, he just uh, loved to play the game and and loved to have fun. We always had a good time in the meetings. Uh, you know, just just a fun guy to play with. Hey, the the I, I'm sure you heard this one, the Charles Martin sack where um, he kind of like body slammed you. Um, what did, what what did that change for you career wise or that year at the time? Like, how how did you respond to that? Because I know I think you lacerated your liver or something, didn't you? Or broke a rib or you did something? No, that was a couple of years prior to that. But that was actually the start of all the head problems I've been having for the last 20 years. Uh, 
the doctor, when he finally saw me, said, you know, the only reason your or only way your head can get this screwed up is if you get dumped on top of it. And I said, well, I've got the film clip of it. Uh, you know, he just kind of picked me up from behind after the play was over. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. And just, you know, from the time he grabbed me till the time my head hit the ground was about probably about a half a second. Right. And, uh, you know, I was just, I just remember laying there thinking, what the hell happened? Where, you know, who hit me? I had no idea. You know, I was still a little, I was a little dinged because of my, you know, my head was the first thing that hit the ground. Everybody thought I had blown my shoulder out on the play, but my shoulder was already gone from week one. So, um, yeah, that was not a, uh, a fun experience. And uh, like I said, I'm still I'm still suffering because of that. You, you experienced the Bears pack rivalry from both sides. Which was the more fun side? Well, when I was with the Bears and, and playing the Packers for seven years, uh, it, it got pretty ugly. Uh, the, I know Forrest Gregg and Mike Dickett didn't get along. They were both the coaches, and they, I think they trickled down to the players. And uh, it, it got pretty ugly there for a couple of years. And so it took me, I probably should have went to Green Bay two or three years prior than when I did, but I just couldn't bring myself to, to go up there because of what had happened. And I finally uh, realized that, you know, Mike Holmgren's up there and, you know, things are going to be different. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think Green Bay took the rivalry as, as, as hard as, as, the, as the Bears did. Uh, you know, when I was with the Bears, we, you know, we did not want to lose to the Packers. I think I only lost once to them in seven years. And uh, so that, that, was, that was the way to play. I mean, Bear Packers is always a, uh, always a tough game. Whether or not they're any good or the Bears are any good, it's always a tough game. Hmm. You know, you're, you're, you bring up the CTE, CTE issues that you are dealing with today. N what, knowing what you know now and, you know, and your health as, as it is right now, <laughs> would you do anything different? Would you, would you still play football? Would you still advise kids to play football? Where, where are you on the game right now? Well, I've got, uh, I've got five grandkids right now, four grandsons. And, and uh, you know, I've talked to my kids about it. And I said I wouldn't let them play until they were at least juniors in high school uh, because physically their bodies are not ready to put on a helmet and, put it, you know, and, and hit people with your head. You're not supposed to be doing that anyway, but, uh, you know, you're, you're physically not able to do all that until you're about a junior in high school. Your body is, is strong enough. Your head can actually hold up the helmet. You know, I see these little kids out there sometimes running around. They, they look like bobbleheads. You know, they can barely hold up their own head, let alone a helmet. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think two years of high school is plenty. Uh, if you've got any talent, colleges will find you. And, and the same as is in the pros, you know, not everybody in the pros is from, you know, Alabama or USC or Notre Dame. You know, there's a lot of, you know, they find talent everywhere. And, uh, you know, two years of high school, I think is plenty. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you got talent, you'll move on. But if not, you know, go do something else. You never answered the, um, the uh, refrigerator Perry naked and how I get that out of my mind. Um, <laughs> Should I, should I dip myself <laughs> on my head to get that out? Of my mind? A little advice here. Come on, Jim. Just, just look in a circus mirror and you'll. you'll, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so, you, knowing what you know, I, I, what would you change? What if you could do anything better? Would it be a different team? Would you sign a different contract? Would you have stayed someplace longer? I mean, you play with a lot of teams. You have this great career. I'm always interested in the path unchosen. What would you have done differently? Well, if I had my druthers, I would have stuck to baseball back in college and ended up doing that. And I think my body would feel a hell of a lot better had I played 15 or 20 years in the in the in the baseball league. But um, other than maybe not playing a few times when I shouldn't have, uh, especially after getting a concussion, you know, I, I know I've, I I think I had three or four documented concussions, but uh, I'm sure, like Bert, I, I probably had a dozen more. Uh, but back then, if you know. The doctor would put his finger in front of your face, and if you could follow his finger with your eyes, you were you were pretty much good to go. You know, tape an aspirin to your helmet. That's what yeah. they said. <laughs> I remember that. Hey Jim, so this is mostly well, this is a high school football show. What's your uh, what's your advice? D one kids, kids in high school getting ready to go D one. What's the biggest thing that you think you missed or I missed or something else that you would tell kids today making a decision? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, I, I would go somewhere somewhere where I had a chance to play early, that's for sure. Uh, I wouldn't want to be going to a college just to uh, be walking on or, or, you know, it's going to take me two or three years to play. Uh, but, you know, that's just, I, I've always wanted to be a player. I don't want to sit there and watch other guys play. I want to play. And, 
So that's what I would tell them, you know, go to a place that we're, it's gonna uh, showcase their skills. You know, depending on what, what position you play, I would go to a school that, that, that uh, showcases those talents. You know, I, I was just thinking, because I, I was thinking back on that Charles Martin. Uh, I don't think Charles Martin is alive anymore. I think he passed away. So No, he did. Uh, he yeah, passed away yeah, in prison. Yeah. Um, you know, th that kind of started an evolution of, so let's start protecting the quarterback. It took a while, but the game now in 2021 is vastly different than the game you played as it relates to protecting the quarterback. Maybe you just came along too late or too early, excuse me. I mean, think about if you played in well, contemporary rules. Well, I'd love to be I'd love to be playing now. I mean, you get to sit back there in the shotgun and spread people out and throw the ball. That's what we did in college. So I, I would have uh, really enjoyed the offenses that are, are are playing now. You know, but I got to go to Chicago where you know you're lucky to get to throw it on third and long. <laughs> <laughs> How did a wishbone quarterback get uh, get picked up by an aerial circus like BYU? Or, or did the uh, did your high school change when they realized they had a guy who could sling it? Well, my senior year, they did change the offense, gave me two backs, got, let me throw it a little bit more. Uh, yeah, but that's I was glad to end up at BYU because we did get to throw the football. I learned a hell of a lot more there uh, than I did anywhere else in the seven teams that I played for. I mean, I, I learned a lot of a lot of football, a lot of a lot of defenses, and uh, what most people don't understand is you got to understand what your guys could do. And not only what they're doing across from me, but what can your guys do against that? And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest jobs of a quarterback is to realize wh what your talent is and uh, utilize them as such. So a lot of people don't know, uh, my rookie year, you, you got to spend a wonderful year with the Chargers and Dan Henning. And what was that experience like? I mean, would you would you come here all over again or, or not? Because it was a, it was a circus back then, obviously, and especially come from the Bears. Yeah, it was, uh, I was I was glad to get out of Chicago. Things were not going well there, you know, because Dick and I weren't getting along. The owner was trying to trade me uh, for a couple of years. And so I was I was happy to move on. I, I got to be reunited with uh, Ted Tolner, who was our quarterback coach then in San Diego. He was my coach my senior year at BYU. Uh, it was nice to be back with Ted. But, um, you know, we weren't, uh, I didn't think we were all that good. I mean, defensively, I thought we were pretty good. Uh, offensively, we had some we had some weapons, but uh, it didn't seem like we we were uh, we were clicking all that well. And and you know, with no shotgun, uh, you know, I was getting stepped on a lot by my guards. That wasn't real fun. That's why I don't wear shoes anymore because my feet are so messed up from those guys planting themselves on me. So uh, yeah, it would have been nice to be able to sit back in the shotgun and throw throw the ball to Anthony Miller and uh, Quinn Early and. Uh, who else did we have? We had the big Arthur Cox at tight end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had we had some talent, but, uh, you know, we just didn't seem to like get it done. Qualcomm Stadium, Qualcomm. Was, or was it Qualcomm? Was it Jack Murphy then? Jack or, Murphy. Uh, back Jack when, Murphy. It, it was good to you. I mean, you had a couple holiday MVPs. Got to play with the Chargers there. I mean, you must have fond rec Is San Diego some, a spot you think of fondly? I, I definitely enjoyed my time there. Uh, the weather, for sure. Um, you know, after coming from Chicago to be being a 75 degrees every day, it was kind of nice. Uh, beautiful area, but you know, you couldn't pay me to live there now. <laughs> hey, what's your what? I mean, like <laughs> yeah. we talked about, <clears throat> the the quarterback position was so different back then. Give us a quick rundown of all your injuries. Yeah, let's play the game of operation. Take us from starting with the CTE, which I think is your probably the thing you're most concerned about. But how battered and bruised are you right now? Well, I, I had, uh, I think it was about 18 surgeries, uh, 12 on my knees and uh, four on my right shoulder, uh, my right elbow. I uh, broke five ribs off my sternum, bruised my heart, tore my kidney off, or bottom part of my kidney off. But uh, other than that, I feel pretty damn good. <laughs> and your feet. Yeah, and your feet. Don't, and don't and your feet. feet, my feet I, I do need another surgery on my ankle. Uh, my ankle's actually falling sideways right now. From playing with, you know, they kept telling me it wasn't broke. Kept trying to play. It was obviously broke in two places. And uh, I'm starting to feel that now. But, uh, yeah, other than my ankle, my, I think I need my right shoulder replaced. It's it's hasn't been the, hasn't been right since, since 1986 when they first operated on it. Um, it still bothers the hell out of me. It, you know, I can't, I don't sleep well. Every time I roll over, I wake up. So I need a couple more, just uh, little tune-ups, and I think I'll be fine for a while. 
So let me ask you one more question because people don't realize this either. How many, if you could put a count on your time in the pros, how many shots do you think you got in the locker room to play or at halftime or to continue to play? Ooh. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know. It would be in the hunters for sure. Yeah, uh, people don't realize that now. Jeez. Well, does that yeah, still they, happen now? I don't know. You think it still happens? Because they always, you know, when they always say we're going to take him to the locker room and take a look at him, that usually means he's getting a shot. But I don't know if it still happens now. But it was just, I, I mean, I think I probably had 100. It, well, it was pretty, yeah, it was, it was pretty uh, prevalent back in the day. You know, nowadays these guys, they'll, they'll sit out. They still get paid. Yeah. You know, back then it was most of my, especially after I left the Bears, most of my contracts were incentive, incentive laden. So in, in, unless I played, I wasn't getting paid. And so whatever it took to get out on the field, I would do it because I, I needed to get paid. I had three little kids at the time, and, uh, you know, I, I needed the money. So l let's wrap it up with this question, knowing it, knowing how you feel right now, knowing all the money you made and all the fame you are, you became a global name, but you also have this body that took a, took a licking. Would you do it all over again? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Like I said, I, I probably wouldn't play it at certain times when I, I knew I shouldn't have played. But uh, you know, that's just that's just me. I'd rather get out there, you know, with a shot or two or some painkillers and, and sit there and watch. So, you know, I do it all again, and uh, you know, I just got to deal with it. I think they call that the warrior mentality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Why? Well, can you swing a golf club still, or is, or is? Well, I can swing it, but I don't know where the hell it's going these days. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my golf game, but it, it went south. <laughs> you, you know, Jim, this is actually the second time I've gotten to interview you. you I was a Cub reporter. You used to go to, uh, the the Bears would go to uw Platteville, I think. for. Yes. And I got a one-on-one -on -one with you. You'll never remember it. I was just a Cub reporter for Madison, Wisconsin. But I remember one thing about it. It was the first day of practice, and you guys were in pads scrimmaging. I, I, none of us easing into it. Day one, you were... You know, loving on loving. I just thought, God, that in high school we get three, we yeah. got three easy days before we even put helmets on. Uh, was, is that I was, was that the, just Mike Dicka, or was that the sign of the times? No, that's that's how it was back then. You know, Mike was an old school guy. He says you don't learn anything by being out here playing patty cake. You know, football is a game of contact, and uh, we had a lot of contact in the seven years I was there. Uh, we were always in pads. You know, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're in pads. Everything was live. You know, there was no, uh, you know, buddy, buddy groups. You know, buddy, buddy Ryan wasn't going to give an inch. Mike Dicka wasn't giving an inch. So, you know, there was fights every play. There was, you know, our, our practices lasted three, three and a half hours because of the fights. You know, he had to get through all the, all their scripts. And so, uh, and then after beating the hell out of each other, he'd, he'd run us to death. You, know? so, you wouldn't recognize training camp today. No, no. no it's I mean, like Club Med. I, I didn't recognize it when I was with the Packers in '96. I mean, we only had pads on maybe once a week or twice a week at the most, and that was in training camp. And and I remember these young guys would be complaining about that. And I go, "You guys are, you know, how good you have it. You, know, you could be in pads every day for six weeks." And, uh, <laughs> Back in the day, beating the hell out of each other. But you know, the way it is now, I think that's why a lot of these guys, you know, when they when they get a little bit nicked. They have a tough time coming back because they're not used to getting nicked. Well, on that con on that note, we will call it a conversation. Thank you for making so much time available to us. It, it was a hoot. All right, guys. Thank you, Jim. All right, have a good day, Jim. All right, Bert. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.